Oh, you had to go and ruin everything, didn't you, again? Anytime Apple does something I find kind of interesting and kind of cool, most of the community has to pull out their giant microscope and look for all the seams and go, there's a flaw somewhere, there's a flaw, there's a problem, I gotta find it, I gotta criticize it, and then that's just gonna be the running theme anytime you're like, hey, I like this part of my iPad. Someone's gonna be like, but don't bend it, don't sit on it, don't touch it, because that thing bends so easily. Oh my god, okay, so today we're talking about all of the bend gate complaints because you guys can't find anything else to go off of for the new iPad Pro. Now look, I'll just come forward and state the obvious. Most people with typical use on a day-to-day -day basis are not going to end up bending their iPads. Now, wait a Hey, wait a minute. Okay, before we go down that path again, I, I've, I've remembered, okay? I've learned this time. No, I do not solder. No, I am not an expert in CPUs and touch disease. But if touch disease was becoming a common problem with the iPad, that would be a legitimate criticism. But fluxion-based damage, well, you know what? I could talk to you about that for a second, but I think Rossman, in his video about me, uh, said it best. Touch IC popping its way off the board, pads breaking under chips because of fluxion-based damage in the piece. CV, not a problem in iPads, never been a problem in iPads, and the way the engineering seems to be going is not going to be a problem into the future in iPads. Why are you not talking about a problem that never occurs? Because it never occurs. Do you even solder? Have you ever even opened an iPad to look at the PCB? I'm guessing no, because if you did, you'd notice that they virtually never have flexion-based damage. They have problems with TriStar chips going bad, they have problems with PMICs going bad, occasionally they'll even have problems with CPUs going bad. But flexion-based damage is not something that happens in an iPad. Can you break it if you break it over your knee? Probably you can, but you're not going to do that in a regular use case. Now, I happen to completely agree with Lewis Rossman. What does the world come to? John Prosser has an iPhone, I'm using an Android. Me and Lewis agree on some that, not, probably not. I'm sure Lewis hates the iPad for being too thin and not having a headphone jack or not supporting the mouse or something. I don't know, but regardless, the fact remains that we do not use our iPads in the same ways that we use our smartphones. They go in our pockets, some people bizarrely put them in their back pockets, and over time, as Rossman stated, cause more and more fluxion on the device over time, and that can dislodge parts of the device. This has never been a running problem when it comes to iPads, so let's just extinguish that whole fluxion-based complaint until there's actually some use cases in reports that people are saying, hey, you know what, this is becoming a common problem, not just a single single instance, no, you can't just have one iPhone 10 blow up and then say, okay, it's the new Note 7. It's gotta be a little bit more widespread than that. Now, what's interesting is all of this is stemming basically from Jerry Rig Everything's video where he took an iPad Pro and was very easily able to bend it in half. But I have a little bit of a spoiler for you and a few questions to ask. But first of all, the spoiler, all iPads bend. This has never been a difficult task for durability channels to do. Any tablet, really, anything made of aluminum that's that large, pretty easy to break when you do that to it. So I looked around on Jerry Rig Everything's channel for a while. I wondered maybe he did a bend test on the Tab S4 so we can compare bendability on different iPads. Uh, nope. In fact, bend tests on tablets seem to be, for the most part, not really present unless a new iPad shows up. Then everyone wants to do a bend test on that. The iPad's not going in our pockets. Most people are putting them in folio cases like this or keyboard cases that add an extra layer of protection. They're putting them in briefcases. They're putting them in backpacks and I'll admit that there are many times I'm trying to stuff as much clothes or equipment or whatever I need to take with me in my backpack as possible, and then at the last step, I'll stuff my iPad in there as well. It's probably putting a lot of stress on it, but in all of my years of owning an iPad, I have never pulled it out of the backpack and discovered the screen doesn't work anymore, or the tablet bent because I put it in luggage that was too rough. So basically, I'm just trying to say that it doesn't take a genius to know that when you make a large device with a large amount of surface area and it's primarily built of aluminum. Yeah, making it thinner makes it fairly easy to uh, start bending if you want to, but in the words of that wonderful and genius Samsung commercial, why would I ever want to do that though? Most people aren't going to do that. I have been fairly rough on iPads in the past. I've dropped them, I've tossed them across the room, and I treat it basically the same way I would treat a laptop, you know? It's nice and light, so it's easy to carry with me, but I'm not like smashing it against walls and stuff. Only time in my personal life that I've heard 
of people actually bending their iPads is when they're being intentionally rough with it or mad at it. So they throw it across the room or they hit their knee on it and it starts to bend the device a little bit. But I've even had people say that they've bent their iPad after kneeing it in the middle and then the iPad still works, like the screen's still operational and they bend it back. So this ridiculous claim that keeps bouncing around the internet that the iPads have this bend gate problem, surprise, surprise, might be a little bit overblown. And I just thought I'd make this before Lou gets to it. If you see a lot of people trying to dissuade you from buying this incredible and amazing device, I really encourage you not to feel dissuade or bad about buying it because there are reports that it's so fragile, it's so bendable, that you might like accidentally sit on it one day and it will just snap in half very quickly. You really don't need to worry about that. I've been fairly rough with this thing. I haven't been intentionally rough with this thing because iPads, laptops, they're expensive and honestly you should treat them with a little bit of respect. I'm not saying you have to put on surgery gloves every time you want to use the device, but yeah, maybe don't sit on it. I think that's a good idea. I would say that to any laptop. I'm not just talking about the new MacBook Air, the 12 inch MacBook, even 17 inch gaming laptops. I would say, you know what? I wouldn't sit on that. And if you did and it broke, I really wouldn't be that upset about the company who made the laptop and said, you made a cheap product. They're like, well, you're 200 pounds or 300 pounds and you sat on it. That may cause an issue with it. I would also advise not stepping on any of these computers as well. I'm sure the iPad would probably survive it, honestly, if it was sitting on the floor, but regardless, you probably just shouldn't do that. And if you do that and then the iPad breaks, at a certain extent, you have to stop blaming the developer of the company because the thinness with the iPad was not just trying to fulfill Steve Jobs' vision of we need to make it even thinner, we need to make it even thinner, we need to make it even thinner. The idea with keeping the iPad thin is attaching a folio case or a smart type cover to it doesn't add that much to the build. The entire purpose of switching to an iPad from a laptop is that you have a more portable device, one that's not as clunky, one that's just as powerful, but much more mobile, much more versatile. You can use it in all different types of orientations. And Apple knows most people are putting accessories on this thing. So if you get the starting width a lot, lot thinner than the previous generation, that means that you have more wiggle room for third parties or even first party cases, or like the keyboard case to snap onto the iPad very, very simply. And it still has an incredibly slim, very, very compact profile because if you're carrying around a 13 inch tablet, you don't want to feel like you're lifting weights every time you put it into a backpack. This is supposed to be a different, separate experience from a laptop. They also wanted to make it square all around the edges so that the new Apple Pencil docking method would be easier. So once again, they didn't just make it thinner for the sake of making it thinner. And I think they did a pretty good job at making it feel very sturdy. It doesn't crack. It doesn't pop when you're squeezing any part of the device. And if you're going to do bend tests on iPads, I, I know the videos do well. Like you get a lot of clicks when you reveal that your $1,000 iPad isn't good at, you know, karate chopping it down the middle. That gets a lot of clicks and people like that. But if you're going to do that, might as well buy the new MacBook Air, open it up and then just take the display portion of it and just start bending it like this. See if you can break MacBooks while you're at it. Just with your bare hands, if that's all people care about, you can bend it with his bare hand. Okay, I could break all kinds of stuff with my bare hands. It's not that hard, but again, it's not really advised. So again, I'm not a huge fan of durability channels because most of the time my response to these types of complaints is don't be that hard on your device. And if you're hard on it, expect to pay the consequences, whether it be fixing it yourself, paying to get it fixed or not having a device that looks good anymore. If you guys are just watching for the sake of educational value and you want to watch iPads bend, you're welcome to check out everything Apple Pro's channel where he'll show you that over the years, iPads have bent all the time. Pretty much every iPad that's come out that's made of aluminum, you can bend with your bare hands. It's really not that hard. And yes, shocker, when you make a device thinner, it can break a little bit easier now. So just don't do that as much to it. Now, again, if we start getting touch disease problems and we start getting CPUs that dislodge on the insides of the product, then we'll have a major issue. And then watching how Apple handles that issue will affect, I think, the success of the product. But until then, this product just came out. We haven't gotten any reports of that. In fact, my Apple Pencil stopped pairing to my iPad. I feel like that was a major problem, a definite one that I hadn't heard of before. I put my Apple Pencil on the iPad and it wouldn't pair. It would pop up and it would say, this is an Apple Pencil, but then wouldn't connect to the device itself. So obviously I was very frustrated. I went to an Apple store. It was two minutes from our honeymoon BNB. We walked in and said, hey, my pencil's not working. So they just handed me a brand new one. They said, there you go. I didn't get Apple Care. There was no warranty on it or anything. I just walked in and said, hey, pencil doesn't work. They just say, here, take a new one. Works fine now. So if you want to start a gate, let's talk about that one because I looked it up online. No one else seems to be having that problem. So I don't know what causes it, but there's a legitimate problem. $130 stylus stops working after 
after five days. This is ridiculous. Apple needs to fix this problem, but I guess it was nice that they just handed me a free one right after, so yeah. Customer service, right? It's, it's awful. It's just the worst. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you think of the iPad Pro. Ben Gate, uh, I'm so sick of that word. All that good stuff, let me know in the comments below. This is your Apple Sheep here. I'll see you in the next one.